A lot of us aren't looking for top of the line, high-end GPU performance. A lot of us can't afford it either. So with that, today I bring you an unboxing overview and an install of the PowerColor AMD Radeon 6500 XT ITX 4GB card. ITX, so small form factor, it'll fit just about anywhere and perfect for 1080p gaming. So with that, let's get to the unboxing so that we can get to the install real quick. So here she is again, the PowerColor AMD Radeon RX 6500 XT ITX. ITX is the form factor. It is a smaller form factor based off of AMD's RDNA 2 architecture. Perfect for 1080p gaming, having only four gigs of memory running off of the PCIe 4.0 bus, but mind you, it'll run on PCIe 3.0 as well. Along the side here, SEER number, UPC, model number, all that good stuff. Nothing much over here. Now along the back here, two ball bearing for four time greater longevity. Talking about the fan, this is a single fan design, then the mute fan technology, which means if it doesn't hit that temperature, which is maybe around 60 degrees, the fan will go ahead, actually, yep, 60 degrees Celsius, the fan will go ahead and turn off to make it extra quiet. And then key features, specifications, system requirements, and all that. This does require a 400 watt power supply. All right, so let's go ahead and open it up. Wow, this is a teeny tiny card and I'll get right back to this in one sec. Oh, okay, there is literally nothing else in this box. So yeah, okay. <laughs> By the way, the packaging is for their SFC certified packaging for the environment, so good stuff. Also to mention, I prefer when they come in boxes like this because a lot of times you're paying for all that for something that you might throw away anyway. We don't care about this, we care about this. So anyway, moving this aside. I am upset that there's nothing else in the box, but anyway, I'll go ahead and open this up. All right, so teeny tiny card. One fan, this is a 90 millimeter fan. Simple enclosure, black Radeon. Again, helping keep the cost down. Now I paid, I think it was right when it was released about 260 for this one off of Newegg. Power color right over here. And then we can see the copper tubing down here. Copper over here over here, over here. Then we can see the fins right over here. Now this has a 2610 megahertz game clock, then a 2815 megahertz boost clock, 16 compute units with 1024 streaming processors and four gigs of GDDR6 on a 64 bit bus running at 18 gigabits per second. Long over here, we can see it does support HDMI 2.1 and DP or DisplayPort 1.4. Now this does support AMD's Infinity Cache. And again, it does require a 400 watt power supply and a six pin PCIe connection. And let me go ahead and measure this for you real quick. Now, six inches from the front of the card to the rear of the card and one and a half inches wide and about four inches wide. And I'll go ahead and put the exact measurements down below as I'm measuring it. We can see along the back of the card, super teeny tiny card. Over here is where the GPU would be. We can see the plain PCB. It is just incredibly tiny. Then over here, where a little bit of that heat will radiate out as well. Here as well. Now I don't, suppose this card will get very hot but we will definitely do some testing but anyway let's get to the installation real quick now before we can just toss it in our system we need to prepare our system and if we already have a video card we need to remove that video card we need to remove the old drivers and then of course prepare the system for brand new drivers so let's get started on that real quick 
So first off, we're going to open a new browser or a tab, and we're going to go to wagnardsoft.com, and then scroll down a little tiny bit, and we'll go ahead and click on the latest version here. Scroll down a little bit more, and click, click here for download and support. And then we'll scroll down a little bit more, and finally click official download here. Now, DDU is 100% optional, but it is also 100% recommended. So what DDU does is it strips your system of older AMD or NVIDIA or Intel graphics, preparing your system for your brand new video card. Even if it's a brand new install of Windows, Microsoft prepares that install with older drivers. That way, if you don't have drivers at that minute, you at least have basic drivers so you can get going. Even if you're going from AMD to AMD, I recommend recommend you do this because it gets rid of older drivers that potentially have issues. So let's keep going. So now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and go to amd.com, drivers and support. Scroll down a little bit, then we'll click graphics, AMD Radeon RX 6000 series, then AMD Radeon RX 6500 series, and finally AMD Radeon RX 6500 XT, and submit. Then here we can find our drivers. I have Windows 11. If you have 10, 7, they're all right here. And then click download. So now with that done, we'll go ahead and close out of here with all the drivers downloaded. And we'll go to the location where our drivers have been downloaded. And we'll go ahead and open up DDU. Just double click here. And we'll go ahead and extract it to a folder called DDU on the root of our C drive and click extract. This will go ahead and create that folder. So then we'll just click this PC, C, and then here we can find that folder we just extracted and the drivers we just downloaded, they're right here. So now in order to prepare our system, we need to go ahead and hold the left shift key, right click on the start button, hover over shutdown or sign out, and then click restart. You can let go afterwards. So now what that does is it takes us to this choose an option window. Well, we'll go ahead and click troubleshoot, advanced options, and then select startup settings. And finally, we'll go ahead and click restart to the restart to change windows options such as Okay, so finally it takes us to this screen, the startup setting screen. Now this is going to take us into safe mode. The three options that we can select are number four, which is enable safe mode, number five, which is enable safe mode with networking, and finally number six, which is enable safe mode with command prompt. I'm gonna go ahead and select option number four, enable safe mode. So the reason we boot into safe mode to uninstall drivers is because in safe mode, there are no drivers running. There is only Windows basic VGA drivers. So that gives you the perfect environment to uninstall drivers. If drivers are running, Windows cannot remove them. So this gets rid of everything. So here we'll go into File Explorer, this PC, C drive, DDU in this folder, and then we'll double click on display driver uninstaller. Okay, here, I'm gonna go ahead and resize this so that I can see the entire menu. First off, if you have an AMD chipset like the X570, 550, or whatever chipset you may have, you're going to want to go ahead and uncheck these. Now in the system, we're running an Intel chipset, so we're just gonna go ahead and place checks in all of this which will not only get rid of AMD chipset drivers, this will also get rid of AMD video drivers. And now this is for Nvidia, which we can go ahead and do that as well because we're coming from an Nvidia video card. So this is going to remove everything Nvidia. Now scrolling down a little tiny bit, we'll see this option, prevent download of drivers from Windows update when Windows searching for a driver for a device. Now, if there's no check there, place a check there and click OK. So what that does, it stops Windows from downloading what it considers the latest and greatest video driver. And then we'll click 
close here over here we'll click on the drop down for the select device type and click gpu now we're removing the evga geforce rtx 3050 so an nvidia video card but we can select nvidia amd or intel now it doesn't hurt to do one then the next then the next i'm gonna go ahead and do nvidia and then i'll do a clean and shut down right over here so now that the system is shut down, we can go ahead and remove the old video card to install the new video card. So the very first thing we're going to want to do is disconnect the HDMI DP VGA or DVI cable from our old video card. Then we'll go ahead and turn off the power supply. That way we make sure that there is no power running to the system so that it won't turn on on you. So then here we'll go ahead and disconnect the PCIe cable. Now you notice there's a little clamp right over here that's going ahead and holding the card in place. We'll just push it, which unlocks the PCIe cable, and then we'll just pull it out. And now we'll go ahead and remove the two screws over here, locking the video card in place. We'll remove the top one first. And now we'll start on the second one. Go ahead and put your hand underneath the card, just in case we don't want the card falling out. And when we're done here, we're going to want to push in this PCIe locking mechanism. Let me zoom in so I can show you a little bit better. So this locking mechanism locks the card in place. Now, not every single motherboard has it, but just in case, last thing you wanna do is rip the card out, which if this is locked, will also rip the PCIe slot out. So what we'll do is with one hand still holding onto the card, we'll push down on this, and that goes ahead and releases the video card. So now we can easily just pull the card out. So now, since we've removed that previous video card, we've left this PCIe locking mechanism open. That way we can easily insert a new video card. So we'll go ahead and match these PCIe fingers with this PCIe slot. Then we'll go ahead and slide the video card in place. Now we are going to need to push to apply a little pressure to slide this card into that PCIe slot and then also to lock automatically that PCIe locking mechanism and you'll hear it click. Not only did you hear it click, but you saw it lock in place. So now the card isn't going anywhere. Even though it isn't going anywhere, just in case, let's go ahead and screw it in. So the previous video card had an 8-pin PCIe, but you'll notice this is a 6 plus 2, so we can easily remove two of those 8 pins for a 6-pin. Now, not every single power supply is going to have that, and then we can just easily slide it back in. Most AMD cards have the clip along the top, whereas you saw before we had the clip along the bottom, but in this case, on the power color, the clip is on the bottom as well. So we'll go ahead and just slide that in and that'll go ahead and lock the PCIe connection right into place. Now that we have everything back together, we'll go ahead and connect the HDMI cable right into the video card and we'll go ahead and turn the power supply back on. Now with the system back together, let's go ahead and turn around real quick. So now that we're back in Windows, if you remember, we went ahead and set DDU to not allow Windows Update to automatically download what it felt was the best driver. So what we're going to need to do is go into File Explorer, Downloads, and we'll double click on that driver that we just downloaded and click Install, the AMD driver, by the way. And then we'll select additional options. Even though we use DDU to uninstall the previous drivers and everything in there, I'm going to go ahead and do a factory reset as well, which is basically the same thing, but this is just kind of a double check. Then we'll click install. This is going to go ahead and remove all old drivers and then reboot our system. And now click restart now. And then when we're back in Windows, it's automatically going to start reinstalling the driver. 
So I did have to restart the system to disable HDCP on the AMD drivers, but I'll show you just what I did. HDCP or high bandwidth digital content protection is a technology created to stop people from copying digital media. So in this case, I'm copying my screen so that I could show it to you. So the minute I installed the AMD driver, HDCP kicked in and said, whoa, you, you can't copy this, but obviously, completely legal. So what I had to do was finish the driver install, which completed perfectly fine. I clicked finish. I restarted my computer, disabled HDCP, restarted again, and then started recording like you're seeing right now. So when you're back in Windows after all the restarts, you can go to AMD Radeon software. Now you can see the full AMD suite. Now what I did over here real quick, just to show you was I came into the drivers search then I clicked HDCP support, and then I disabled HDCP support. And then, so coming over here under home, we can see the beginning of all of the software suite. Last played, it would show all of our games here. We can adjust the game settings over here. Then current version, up to date status. That way, you know, we could check over here, check for newer drivers, AMD link status, upgrade advisor, all the games installed. We'll go under gaming. Same thing that we had over here. We can launch the game and adjust the global graphics. Here are the games and now it found all the games installed. And then we can go ahead, adjust here if we wanted to, then any compatibility issues over here, 6,500. It'll work with all the games, performance. So we can do some overclocking if we'd like to. These are the base metrics we can tune over here and then some advisors as well coming over here to settings. Now we have the entire software suite. So just going through all the same again, anti-lag at Radeon chill, boost, image sharpening, enhance sync, vertical refresh, display, video, all the different features right over here. So after going over the entire software suite, we can come back over here under display, enable FreeSync if you have the capability, it helps out a ton. Now I do on this monitor, but because this monitor is going through a capture card, I'm stuck at 60 Hertz without FreeSync. So enable that if you can. And then we can also right click on the desktop, go under display settings, then we'll go under advanced display and then choose a refresh rate. Now, if we have higher than 60 Hertz, definitely set that 120, 240, 360, whatever you may have. Again, because I'm going through a capture card, I'm stuck at 60, but once I disconnect it, I can go on this monitor up to 120 Hertz and that helps performance a ton. So in this video, I've shown you how to remove your old video card, remove your old drivers, and then install your brand new video card and install your brand new drivers. That way you don't have anything in the past messing up what you're you're going to do in the future. Now, after we've installed all the drivers, gotten everything working, I also showed you around the AMD software suite, how to enable FreeSync. If your monitor supports FreeSync, which is another boost in gaming, giving you smoother frame rates. And then on top of that, I've shown you how to increase your refresh rate. So you're not stuck at 60 Hertz. Mind you, if your monitor can go higher than 60 Hertz, in this case, again, this monitor can go all the way up to 120 Hertz. Maybe the one you have can do 240. 40, 360, 520, whatever the next step is. But anyway, again, this is Iggy with This Bytes for you, showing you how to install the Power Color AMD Radeon RX 6500 XT graphics card. Iggy out. See you guys.